Oops. Here, one sec, guys. Um, we are live. So welcome, everybody, to our fourth day of the uh, the Revenue um, Boost Challenge. I hope everybody's getting some value from what we've been sharing. Um, today, we're going to be uh, kind of going over um, some other key areas of this challenge. Um, just give me one second. Sorry, I'm having a technical glitch here. Wait one second. Oops. Got to love technology, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't see my screen. Give me one second, guys. Can you guys see my screen okay? No. No? All right. I guess that must have been my internet that was uh, was going in and out. Here we go. Let's see. Having yes. a bit of an issue with my internet, so I apologize in advance if sure, I, uh, no. if it's a little rocky. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be uh, going through um, kind of ways to have uh, really consistent leads and some and three secrets basically that I'm going to share with you guys um, of how to keep consistent lead generation. How to, um, you know, again, be able to build out your your pipeline so that it's completely full all the time. All right. But not only that, how do we convert those leads? I mean, again, I don't care so much about how many leads you can generate. I care more about how many of those turn into profitable revenue generating jobs. All right. And I think everybody here can agree with that. The sales process um, for most people is cumbersome. Um, I would say that most of the a very inefficient um, lead generation system. Um, they have uh, inconsistencies uh, throughout the year. They have ups and downs. And what I typically see is that they're not kind of following these key principles, these key rules. I see a lot of opportunity that gets lost um, just by not following, you know, good sales process. And it really isn't necessary. So I, the other area that I see, um, you know, a lot of uh, waste go into is when buying leads, right? So if we don't have a great system um, to convert those leads, um, it's going to be very expensive for you to generate an actual acquired sale. Okay. And most of the time when we work with guys, what we find is they don't necessarily need more leads. Um, sometimes it is the case, but um, they actually need to get better and more efficient at closing sales and at getting to customers fast. All right. So if you, you know, the worst thing I can hear is I need more leads. One first question, they're telling me over a week. That doesn't fly in this this economy anymore, unfortunately. I wish it did. Um, but we have very limited time to actually get back in in front. And that's that's across the board. That's whether you're doing business to business or business to, you know, customer, it doesn't matter. Um, that's where we're we're seeing, you know, a great deal of loss occur. Um, so just to recap, yesterday we talked about launching the lead generation offer and setting up follow-up plans. Out of curiosity, how many people here had a chance to actually follow some of those follow-up processes? Anybody anybody complete the challenge yesterday, actually following up with some of their leads that are already in their pipeline? I, I did. You did? Okay. Yeah. Um, I had, um, I guess, 10 or so that um, we haven't had a discussion yet. Okay. But I've noticed that they have been reading my content okay. that I give them. So I just, like you said yesterday, I'm just going to keep rocking and rolling until they tell me to stop. Yeah, absolutely. And again, this comes down to our consistency secrets, right? Um, so there's a couple of things that I've learned um, through my 23 years experience being a contractor and working with hundreds of other contractors is where most contractors lack is inconsistency. All right. So consistency is the key to turning quick wins into sustainable systems that generate leads and close sales consistently. Um, today, today, I'm going to share with you some habits and strategies that keep the momentum going. All right. Um, and prevent your leads from decaying, prevent, um, you know, opportunities from slipping away. Um, and I really want you guys to be, um, you know, reflective of what your behavior looks like now. What are your habits all right. And are they leading you to growth or are they leading you to stagnation? Okay. There's only two ways to grow a business. 
All right, two ways and two ways only. You can only grow it through marketing and sales. Anybody wants to argue with me about that, we can have that discussion all day. Um, a lot of guys get caught up in the production of their company, which is understandable and I totally, I get it, all right? But we're not growing at that point. We're actually retracting, all right? So if our, all of our time is being spent producing jobs, managing crews, stuff like that, um, although a necessarily necessary evil, what aren't we doing in that in that space? Uh, if we're not marketing and selling every single day, all right, it's very difficult to grow a company, especially in the competitive environments that some of us are in, right? So it often leads to this inconsistency. So consistency secret number one, um, the daily lead engagement, all right? So engage with your leads daily, whether it's emails, calls, or social media, which we shared yesterday on what that plan should look like, what the the you know the schedule should look like. Again, that's you know that is um, aggressive, but it's not so aggressive that you're you're going to piss people off. Um, but you have to keep these conversations going. All right, you have to build trust with your potential clients. Um, you know, constantly bugging them if they need a lead. We got to be a little bit more creative in our, in our approach. I'm talking about helping them make a decision, guiding them through a big decision, adding value to what they're doing. Right. So. Um, again, it's not so much what you, what you, how often you say something, it's what you say, right? It's what you're doing, um, that keeps you in front of your customer. All right. Um, and I feel like a lot of, a lot of contractors really miss this opportunity to build trust and value with them before actually getting the conversion. Okay. So consistency secret number two, leveraging automation. Um, setting up automated email sequences, SMS follow-ups, um, you know, automation, uh, again, has dramatically changed the amount of time that it took to actually do these things on a consistent basis. This now allows a single man operation to have a full, you know, a full equal playing field with even the larger contractors. Okay. Where it can appear that you are consistently doing these things. Um, and again, it's a time saver. I can't, I can't stress to you enough. Just think about it. If you have five leads and the purpose of yesterday's challenge was if you have five leads and you've been following up with them every single day, that starts to accumulate. That's time, right? We're talking about a half hour, 45 minutes every single day to do those things, right? Where can we automate? Where can we add things that are going to, again, take a good system and make it great, Right. So hopefully mm -hmm. you guys kind of caught up on a bit of that and just seeing where that can be um, leveraged. All right. So after interaction, um, we need to analyze what worked and what didn't. All right. So tracking conversions after each follow-up touch and refining your approach. This is how I've been able to build our systems out over many years. It's changed. It continues to evolve and change. Um, you know, we can all probably agree that the customer we're dealing with today is not the same customer we dealt with five years ago. Okay. I'll give you a great example of this. When I, you know, when I was first uh, kind of starting out um, and we were, you know, really killing it with our sales at that time, we were sending mailed letters and our appointments would take, you know, we would purposely schedule our, our appointments a week out so that everyone else there could get there and give their quotes. And we didn't have any problem with, with appointments. All right. Now we'll flash forward to today. All right. If we're anything under a day, all right, we've somebody else has already made those impressions. And our likelihood of actually, you know, even getting in front of the customer at that point is dramatically reduced. All right. We're seeing a lot more people ghosting, which wasn't even a thing, you know, back back then, even five years ago, that was very uncommon. Um, now it's very common. All right. Especially if you're pulling leads coldly from, you know, certain sources. Okay. So again, tracking your conversion and messages are actually working. Okay. Um, never, you know, everything in, in business, I mean, it can be interpreted and it can be misinterpreted. Uh, the one thing that we can't deny is what our numbers say, right? The bet more we use numbers to guide our decisions, um, the easier our contracting lives become. Hey, Nick, I see you got your hand up. Yes, uh, I'm a little uh, torn on this, like the speed. Uh, so during office hours, of course, like I get a new lead, a phone call answer right away. But now even on the weekend, I get some people, I got a lot of other guys that are here, they're like open 24 hours. So they answer on weekend. And that's kind of why I started this whole thing. So to have a business and not a job. Correct. 
Do I still answer right away in the weekend, evening, nights, all that stuff, or that back on Monday? Okay, so um, maybe this is premature, but like within the next year, all right, and we have this right now, we're already testing it, like AI is going to take over for that. 100%. There's voice AI right now that's like, we've got it used in our business. The conversion on those AIs, um, again, are, you know, we would convert 70% into booked appointments. Um, they're, they're hitting around 50% now. All right. So within a year, I mean, I feel like they'll be they're, they're they will really take over in, in terms of like qualifying and getting appointments booked and answering your phones. And just think about it from an overhead cost perspective, like, you know, to train a, a CSR, to have somebody come into your business and, and just answer phones and, and be as proactive as you need them to be. Um, and, you know, again, we're talking, you know, a 90 day onboarding, 50, 60,000 bucks a year. And then here's no guarantees. It's high turnover role. I feel like that's where AI is really going to step in and replace, you know, human beings is on, definitely on the interaction and transactional conversations. Um, so, I mean, to answer your question, short term, I would stick to what, what you're doing. That's working again. We're fighting here. Like it's not like COVID where we had an abundance of leads just banging down the door. Um, you want to grow through this recession, the guys that grow profitably now and come out the other side, which will be probably second quarter next year. Okay. Are going to explode right when that, because the demand is still there. So I would stick with what you're doing. Um, and again, you know, contractor AI, we're, we're working on creating these additional, you know, features that we can add. Um, we're already testing them. I have them in my business um, where they're actually answering calls on our recruitment side as well. So, you know, within the next probably 90 days, we'll be, we'll be launching that with those members. They're not perfect, but for after hours and like weekends, you can't go wrong, right? You're fulfilling the, the client's needs. So the chat, AI and the, you know, the AI bot. And I think that society is actually getting more evolved to, to work with them. Like you call your bank, right? That's all AI. And people yeah. are more used to these things happening. And I think as it starts to really. So that's your question. Uh, the last part cut, but yes, yes. So uh, I'll just keep going what I'm yeah. doing right now. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so um, the consistency, again, in your follow feedback loops, okay? So what's really, really important is, again, is that we're analyzing, especially as we're launching new marketing campaigns. It's so it's so common, um, and Nick, you can probably back me up on this, little tweaks, little changes to the way that you're communicating with your clients. I mean, again, this is what, you know, really gives you that that wow factor in your sales process, right? So if we're not always trying to improve and we're not always trying to give the customer a better experience, whether it's business to business or, or B2C, um, then we will find that we're going to get outpaced, all right, by somebody that is, you know, evolving. The cool thing about marketing, um, I can say is on, you know, contrary to popular belief, it's a very data driven process. Okay. The people that are the best at marketing I found are more like your accountants, right? They're not, they don't have a colorful personality. Um, some people in marketing that are on the creative side do, but like in terms of the actual people that are getting results in marketing, um, you will find that they are very data driven because the numbers don't lie. Okay. So when you're looking at your sales process, you're looking at conversions, you're looking at, you know, the response rates to certain texts and certain messages, you're going to get, you know, much, much further ahead than a company that's, you know, just using, you know, templates and setting and forgetting it. Right. So again, these are things that um, we want to design around our brand. I've started you guys all on the process of, you know, giving you templates and things that, um, you know, in general work, but you want to customize these to your business. You want to customize these things to your brand and you want to measure the hell out of them. Okay. Because again, as, as consumers evolve, as your sales process evolves, hopefully as your business grows, all right, those messages have to grow with it, right? The frequency, the conversations, the chats. I mean, somebody starting out doesn't necessarily need a full blown, you know, 90, 90 uh, day or 190 day um, nurture sequence, 
Okay. They should be, you know, even just starting out, just following up is going to get them, you know, probably some pretty good results, right? For companies that are are looking to grow aggressively, again, the automation, stuff like that, it, it just makes sense. All right. Bringing down your overhead costs, making you more competitive. Um, and really what I want to make sure everybody's leaving here with um, is an understanding that there is a small window of which we have time where people that are on the forefront of this um, are going to make huge growth spurts with it. All right. Because there aren't a lot of companies that are adapting to it. Right. I mean, now really kind of, you know, leaning into uh, AI that rests. I even bring up the word AI, I even bring up automation and it's like they shut right down. OK, and we can contribute that to construction. I don't think anybody um, is naive or ignorant. Um, construction in general is about 25 years behind every other industry, every other market. All right. And the funny thing about it, um, you know, again, I've I have some clients that could barely use their emails. All right. That are using this technology now and getting huge results. All right. And the reason why is simple. Right. It saves time. It gets results. All right. Low hanging fruit in my eyes. Um, it gives you more time to work on the more critical things within your business. If you're constantly struggling with repetitive tasks, all right, or you have staff member, expensive staff members that are, you know, inconsistently doing the things that, you know, you know, actually get results. So follow up. There's no debate. There's no, you know, it's, it's not a new, a new concept either, but contractors have always struggled with it. Um, for the primary reason that they get busy, right? Their staff get busy. It's never been done on a consistent base. I've been able to grow my 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 business, um, you know, at times into the eight figures certain years, um, and it's it's from these these key principles, these key things within my sales process that have always been, you know, the solid base. We've always had a consistent follow up. We've always had a good sales process. We've always had sales playbooks follow like those those traditional things that just work, right? And we've always been very much focused on growing the business through sales and marketing. Okay. Um, it's also as automation has come in, it's given us a lot more time to focus on the delivery aspect of it and to focus on building our teams. The, the cool thing too um, is all the stuff we're discussing today, everything that we've gone through in this, in this revenue challenge can be completely reversed and we can call it hiring and recruiting. They're the exact same thing. They're done the exact same way in the same systems. All right. Anybody that hasn't figured that one out yet, um, you know, there's a gift for you is if you market and sell the way you hire and recruit, your business is going to grow. We're in the resource business. Okay. Whether you realize it or maybe you have, all right, you have to acquire two major resources, customers and manpower to do the work, right? Good people to, to actually produce it. Well, if you're doing both of those things at the same time, all right, and you've got an efficiency there, you're going to see your business grow. Simple as that, right? Again, the one who has the resources wins the game. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and again, let's just kind of break this down and make it as simple as we can. Like the businesses that dominate the markets are the ones that are engaged and in front of their now, again, some people will perceive this as annoying or, or pushy or high pressure, whatever you want to call it, all right? But would you want to be in front of a company using these things, competing directly with you, doing them manually? That's the question you need to ask yourself, right? Will your, will your company be able to continue doing things manually, um, you know, on, on this basis, right. We're going to see, and again, um, you know, this isn't theory or anything else. We're seeing it firsthand. We're going to see a huge consolidation in the construction market. It's already happening, right? We already see a lot of venture capitals coming in and buying up, you know, smaller mom and pop, you know, businesses in, in droves. Um, we have a huge, you know, labor shortage with a lot of owners retiring. Okay. Why do you think that they're making the move on the market now? What do you think is really driving that? I can tell you it's data and technology, right? Is that now construction is accessible to these other venture capitals. So either you're going to be on the side of technology and you're going to be on the side of, you know, innovation using AIs and stuff like that to protect yourself, 
All right. Because you don't want to compete with some of these guys when they can come in and, you know, buy all the competitors around you and, you know, you have to keep up with their innovation and that's not going to be a very fair fight. Right. So you guys like Angie's list, um, all those guys, those are sales and marketing companies, guys, which you don't maybe don't realize if you're buying leads from them. Okay. Very soon. And they've already started. They're going to become the contractors, right? They're going to consolidate our markets. They're going to they're going to start buying it up, just like you know Home Depot ran out all the small um, hardware stores. The same thing is happening right now in front of your eyes. And again, the only way to stop it or to prevent it or to you know keep yourselves you know at the at the better end of it, all right, is to adapt. Right, we have to adapt. Again, are these companies using these kind of technologies? Hundred percent, and they have been for years. That's the even scary part. What we're what we have in front of us now with the technology and with AI and everything else, it's not new. That's the that's the funny part. It's new to us. It's new to the general public, but it's not new overall. It's been around. I mean, if we really want to get into it, over fifty years. All right, they've had it. Banks have been using AI. AI has been in our lives for over a decade. Anybody that's bought ads, how do you think all the ads are ran? Right? How do you think you know the um, the internet just knows what you're, what you're thinking about, right? Has anybody said something around their phone and all of a sudden the ad pops up? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think that is? What do you think is running that it's, it's been AI the whole time. All right. So again, um, for some of you guys, it might be scary. Um, some of you guys that might be overwhelming and that's, that's absolutely fine. How can we make it a part of your business in your future? And ultimately lead to, you know, protecting your business or, you know, getting it ready to be sold, right? And we should always be thinking about those things as well, right? I know that I am, I start with my exit in mind. I have my my eyes set on it, right? I'll probably get purchased at one point from a venture capital, but I promise you it'll be, you know, 10 times EBITDA or, you know, even better than that, right? Because I plan to put up a hell of a fight, you know, with these things implemented in my business. Make sense? So again, kind of getting back to what happens if we don't apply these these secrets that I've shared with you, just these basic things, if we don't apply them, right? You'll see some um, you'll see some short term results, um, but I mean, ultimately your leads are going to dry up. We're going to still see um, a lot of inconsistency in your pipelines, right? You'll end up chasing cold leads while competitors stay consistent. Okay. So again, really, you guys got to make a decision, anybody that's listening to this on, you know, what it is that you foresee your company being, right? Are we a million, 2 million, 10 million, $20 million operation? All right. Well, I can tell you, even to do a million dollars now, we have to be, we have to be so clever with our time. All right. Basically, the way I look at it is that, you know, the, the contractor of the future is going to have to do three times as much in half the time. All right. That's, that's a reality. You're already seeing it, right? So again, what's going to happen when everything speeds up, when competition's speeding up, right? Your nearest competitor are using these things that can have hundreds of conversations going at one time. And then you're stuck trying to do things manually. Not really good for business, is it? Mm -hmm. Right? So that means that you would have to do three to four times as much to get the same result you're basically getting now. That's not going to be, that's not going to be very much fun. All right. Um, and again, uh, in terms of getting consistency and getting uh, results, um, there's still plenty of time to, you know, continue to do things manually and be successful with it. I'm not saying you can't be all right. But and I, I recommend everybody starts off at least at the basic level. If you're just starting out doing things manually, making sure you know what works and being confident in those decisions. All right. Before you speed things up. All right. But plan to do this within the next three to six months. If you're brand new to business, I would say no longer than that. You should have all of your sales process sort of dialed in. If you need help going faster, of course, we're here to help you. Um, but it will not, um, AI doesn't help you if you don't have the fundamental basics in place. If you haven't bought into the what a follow-up is, what a sales process is, you don't have these things and you haven't done that, that initial legwork with your business, you're going to feel... And going faster on a broken on a broken foot is probably not good for the body, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So um, what's our action steps for today? Um, we're going to set up your consistency plan. So engage daily, automate your follow-ups, pretty simple. Um, and again, if you guys uh, want to um, go fast with this, we have a incredible offer for you guys that are listening in. Um, we will actually do all of these things for you. All right, we'll come in, we'll build the automations, we'll give you all the tools and assets, help you to adjust your sales process. We're also going to make sure that you know how to price your jobs properly. You have proper systems in place for what we call our startup seed um, uh, group. All right. So those are guys that are, are you know, under a million bucks, basically. For guys that are over a million dollars, book a call with us. We can definitely help you there as well. Um, but we wanted to make this offer knowing that most guys are uh, below that million dollar mark. And this is really designed for you guys to kind of get in and start above that. All right. Um, again, we'll be sharing other templates in school. Um, so everybody has access to our school. I'll be sharing a whole bunch of other additional uh, templates and goodies there. So you can grab them after this call. And um, as we wrap up today, um, want to make sure that uh, everybody's leaving with a takeaway. So I'm going to call out a few guys here that are on the call. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot and see what you've been able to take away from our, our revenue challenge so far. So Nick, I see your face first. What's one single takeaway that you've gotten from, from our revenue challenge? Uh, that's the, the offer. You gotta be, yeah. you gotta be ready for your offer. Absolutely. And, and I'm sh And so that brings me, so we'll get ready for the offer. Then the offer will, I'm sure that's going to have an increase in sales. Absolutely. And we got with that uh, automated, like follow up and system that I, I got running like pretty well. Mm -hmm. So this is good, but you need to be ready for that. Cause I, I, there is no way since before I started this, that I would have done this kind of follow up by hand. Not a chance, not a chance. No, no, it, it's just not it, enough time. The amount of days I got, that's crazy. Right, right. So again, you're a great example before when we started working together, um, you know, we didn't have a follow-up process. We didn't have consistency to see our leads, but now we're actually able to pull leads that other people can't serve. And that's what I love the most is because we're, we're actually generating cheaper lead costs, all right, from, from leads that other people just can't serve. They call them tire kickers. They call them whatever. They're much cheaper to generate, but they're actually just in a different um, decision-making process. A lot of them are, you know, potentially just in research mode, right? We're keeping mm -hmm. them nurtured. We're keeping them warmed up. We're not giving up on them. Everything we've shared here and how to generate revenue. We have a good source of those as well as, you know, ones that are ready to buy now. Okay. And again, this is where you see the consistency start to be built in and it's zero additional work, right? It's allowed you to even focus on making other critical hires, watching your business grow, kind of getting away from the tools. So mm -hmm. again, showed up, did the work, followed the process. And again, now he's, he's got a whole new set of problems to solve, right? Yes. Which we, we hope we can help him solve as well. Um, Jimmy, I see you're here. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you give me one takeaway that you've gotten from this revenue event so far? You know, you, you telling us are talking about the, um, everything going faster. Usually, I don't like being fast, but this right here really uh, injuvenated my, um, I guess, my HVAC spirit, <laughs> I guess you could oh, say. Oh, man, after my own heart. I, I love it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm really uh, I'm really interested in that uh, automated stuff. And also, the uh, what you said yesterday, uh, you know, uh, the three um, call, text, and email. Yep, I've been three boxes. That. Yeah, and so... Uh, with all that said, man, this is this is a uh, this is a lot of information I like. Yeah, absolutely. I hopefully it's information that you're going to take actions with, right? So you mentioned you'd already taken oh, yeah. action in your follow up. Um, again, oh, it yes, all comes sir. down to taking the first steps, right? Um, at the end of the day, I want everybody to walk away with increasing their revenues. And again, there's no magic to this, right? We've got to we've got to just take the 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 very next step. And that's, you know, whether we're automating or not, I've given you all the tools. So I'd love, uh, I'd love to hear what your results are as soon as you kind of get through this and I'm um, looking forward to that. Trevor. Yes, sir. What's one takeaway you've gotten from this? 
Well, I was uh, kind of leaning on the same thing Nick said, actually. Uh, mm. Not to reiterate him, but like just having all my ducks in a row to uh, take next steps. Right. You know, and, and to be honest with you, some of it's a little bit overwhelming. Like, what do I do next? Which one do I do? What do I do? How do I do it? Stuff like totally. that. But but the excitement is there. I mean, once everything comes together, you know. Right. Well, and, and again, we work with you directly. So a lot of this stuff is just going to be there for you, right? Um, yeah. Really honing in on your offer. That's, uh, that's, that's you know, a big takeaway trying to figure out. And I noticed you posted your offer too. So, I mean, getting that dialed in and not having to worry about how am I going to follow up with these guys? How am I going to build all that stuff out? So again, you know, in relieving some of that anxiety, but it's totally new stuff, right? We all, we all like to think about new and the new is exciting, but ultimately no one likes to really do new stuff, right? It's change sucks, but you're doing the work and you're here uh, regularly. So, I mean, I can't wait to see your results as well. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for these timelines to speed up, you know, yeah. like get into a teleporter and let's get there. Yeah, that's if I had a if I if I could get paid for every time I I've heard that for sure. Yeah, yeah, right. So cool, Johnny. No, oh, he might have jumped off. No, I'm here. Sorry, Just hang on. What's uh What's a takeaway that you can share from this from this event? Well, yeah, it's uh really the speed. It, of everything in the the marketing like we still haven't really done any marketing for sales a whole mm -hmm. lot yet so just kind of getting that lined up the offer and everything and and being yep. ready to follow up um uh as you said so yep um and also just the other things in the list the, the proven strategies of going through and making sure google is all set up and everything yep. else like that so yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So again, it's just about taking, you know, the next step, we've given you easy ones, we've given you some ones that are more complicated, but um, anybody that takes even, even some of these things, you know, you posted your offer, that's a big step, right? Now it's real. Yeah. Now it's actually yeah. going to happen. So I mean, until we get that opportunity to do that, um, sometimes we can think about these things all we want. They're not going to happen until we start to take the actions, right? Take those yeah. first initial steps. So yeah, I see I've got, what's that? It's definitely overwhelming sometimes. So. And listen, it should be. Like, think about it this way, guys. Like, we're people that get overwhelmed. I, I get overwhelmed all the time, right? Um, But has there ever been a time when you've made meaningful change in your business, in your life, where it wasn't overwhelming? Yeah. Right? No. So embrace it. Get get yeah. used to it, right? It. I would be more concerned if it didn't feel overwhelming. It's supposed to, it's new, right? It's something yeah. that, you know, you have to, you kind of have to do. And I mean, it's not comfortable, right? Um, you know, we don't, uh, we don't want to sugarcoat it any, um, but once you're through it, you're going to be like, wow, what a, what a good idea. Right? What a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I see one more on here. I'm not sure. Jay, Jay Dottie. Yeah, Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan, how's it going? Good. Good. So can you give me a takeaway from, from the revenue uh, the revenue challenge so far? Uh, I've got like three big ones, actually. Okay, cool. Uh, we've that. just changed our business model. We, we build, we've been in business for about 10 years and we build track subdivisions. So we okay. do, we're under construction on nine homes right now. We're under construction on 16 Tons homes. And we're feeling that the risk of that is getting too high right now. So mm. our core, where we started out, was just to build custom homes. Okay. So now we're focused on, just as of last week, we're focusing on custom homes, on fix and flips, because those come up all the time around uh, the Atlanta area. Okay. And uh, what I've taken away, what I've learned so far that it's going to help me greatly on that is, number one, the offer, because it helped me define my ideal customer. Now that we're in going down these new revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is uh, we don't have, we have a CRM. We use mm -hmm. JobTread, but it doesn't oh, have we, any or anything like that. So, so that's really so we're actually partners with JobTread. Um, this goes like our system goes seamlessly into theirs. Theirs is a great project management system, but they're exactly. not trying to be a, like they're not trying to do what we're doing. Um, and that's why it's a good it's a good fit for us. But like in terms of automating and like the sales process. Um, they have like minor features, but, um, you know, again, their primary yeah. thing is how to run a job. 
Yeah, they're a project manager platform. Uh, yeah. They're great for estimations and everything else, mm -hmm. but they don't have any email campaigns or marketing. Right. Uh, so they I'm can't store your CRM. websites, all that stuff. So yeah. yeah. So uh, the offers, the offer that we went through, is helping me to find my ideal customer uh, mm -hmm. CRM because I need to. We definitely need to get into more automation. Um, and then just today, uh, thinking about looking into AI phone. Okay. So that we can take 24 hour calls, even though we're not working 24 hours. Absolutely. That'd be we, great to implement all of those. Yeah, absolutely. Especially again, um, we work with a lot of builders just like yourself. Um, and they're, they're already starting on it. Um, so, you know, it will be only a matter of time. Um, especially if you're out, you know, looking for custom homes and stuff like that. So love to chat with you. If, uh, if you're interested and see how we can help you. We have, um, we have an appointment tomorrow. Oh, perfect. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So yeah, we'll we'll yeah. share we'll exchange lots of ideas on how you can uh, you can build up your your new revenue streams. Absolutely, great, love the share. Thank you very much. Absolutely, cool. All right, guys. So um, tomorrow's the last day of our revenue um our revenue challenge. Um, again, we're going to be talking about um taking action, removing roadblocks, um, making sure that we can get our teams to buy in on this change or this new you know, this new process. Um, again, us as owners and visionaries, um, typically we have great ideas. We have lots of things that, uh, you know, really motivate us. And then we go to implement them with our teams and what happens? It all falls down. <laughs> I know I've done it. I know I'm bringing in anything new. If you guys feel overwhelmed at this level, imagine how your team and staff and people around you feel. Right. So I want to have a, an honest conversation about how to get buy in, how to get, you know, again, how to um, stage massive, massive action. Right. How to get people excited about the change, how to even make them um, part of it so that they believe, you know, it was their idea, because that's always the best way. Right. Um, again, we have to we always have to be thinking about how to get things off our plates. And the cool thing about this is this can be a total team sport. Um, especially as you kind of delegate. So we'll be talking about how to delegate right fit and any of the, you know, the other um, nuts and bolts that go with, you know, making a significant change in your sales process. We'll also have a short conversation about, um, you know, again, planning ahead, being, being three months ahead. As a contractor, I've learned everything I do today has impact in 90 days, all right? So again, our decisions you know, the things that we are doing right now, all right, we're going to see the results of in 90 days. Okay. So I want to help you guys kind of plan that out um, and make sure that you are being set up for, um, like I said, massive action um, and feeling really confident about the changes that you could potentially be making to your business. Sound good? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. Appreciate everybody's time and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, guys.